Welcome to the Stop Wasting Your Wine podcast, a wine review podcast where we waste our wine so you don't have to. On today's episode, we review a red wine from Oregon. Welcome to the show. I am Joel. I'm joined by two of the smoothest criminals that I know, Aaron and Colin. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing great, Joel. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Colin, how are you, bud? I'm doing pretty good. I'm excited to uh, get into this wine. Yeah. Before we do that, I would be remiss if I just let us move on from this without uh, calling this out. Did you... Where is this wine from, Aaron? Oregon. Or- Oregon. Or- or- Oregon. I have never heard somebody say Oregon outside of in reference to Oregon Trail, which I don't even know why we call it Oregon Trail, but... Uh, Oregon, right? Or Oregon, <laughs> Oregon, Oregon, or or Oregon. Or- <laughs> I feel like as I'm I've getting never... older, I'm having less confidence in like word pronunciation, and now I'm just panicking. Or, or- Oregon, well, Oregon. I'm sorry, or- I put a lot Oregon. of pressure on you. Oregon. I I think it's perfectly acceptable, or at least even thinking back when I was a kid in computer class, <laughs> sticking in the that's thing. A, that's a great game. Fantastic. It always just died from dysentery, though. Why? Yeah. Yeah. We get bit by a rattlesnake. Can't escape the something. dysentery. So I was yep. yeah. so scared of dysentery and rattlesnakes in my youth yep. for no reason. Like yeah. that and like yeah, and right. lava. I feel like I was very was... like concerned <laughs> that those things were going to happen to me and then they never did. I was going to say my wheel breaking in the river while I'm trying to cross it has sure always that. been uh, just a, a terrifying prospect for me. So. Oh, God. All right. So, hey, we know we're drinking red wine from Oregon, Oregon, however you want to say it at home. Aaron, tell us a little bit more about this wine today. Yeah, absolutely. So the brand here is Samuel Robert Winery, and this is specifically the Family Reserve Pinot Noir. It is from Willamette Valley, or Oregon. Uh, and uh, Oregon. I'm going to have to w- stop you there. W- Willamette. Yeah, I'm sorry, but Willamette. Willamette. Willamette? First. Willamette. Willamette, like damn it. There's so many English words here that I can't pronounce. I mean, like, I'm just, you know, we, I have been, like, butchering, like, French wines for weeks now, and now I, we have something from America, and I can't pronounce two-thirds of these words. Valley, I'm pretty sure I, I nailed, but, like... Nailed it? Oh, my God, look at them. Redemption Willamette? Story. Willamette. That's Willamette. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's doesn't it? mess with yeah. Europeans who are coming to visit. That's stupid. That could be. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Okay. Um, Will- Willamette Valley, Oregon. Uh, and this is a- Why would you say it like that? <laughs> <laughs> this is in Texas. You know- I don't know where Oregon is. This is a 13.5% alcohol by volume. Um, and, I, and I will say, you know, this was actually, we, we've been trying to find, uh, you know, more accessible wines that are all over the place. This one was, it was a trickier find. We all had to go to our like local wine distributor. It wasn't one that was at my local, uh, layer stores or, or, or wine shops. It was, it was something I had to find. And maybe that's because it's West coast wine, but the price range, pretty solid 20 to six, 22 99 for me. And Joel, once again, beat us all by waiting to the last possible second, having That's someone good. show up an hour before to drop it off, and he paid a dollar less than us. So, yeah. Procrastination. Again, try it. No, I can't. My brain would explode if I was just waiting for the wine to get here without, I don't, yeah, I, I couldn't do it. Oh my God. I just got to chill, yeah. man. It's all going to work out. No, I, I the, the reality is I, I totally forgot and uh, scrambled to get it delivered. And yes, Wildly did get it at a better price than you both. So this is the second time. It's the second time somewhere. that you have been woefully prepared and made out better than the two of us. <laughs> Whatever. Man. All right. Why are we drinking this uh, wine today, anyways? Yeah, Colin, why'd you pick this one? Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, that's a great question. So we are nine episodes in, and we have yet to have a Pinot Noir. What? So yeah. I wanted to. Yeah, I know. I wanted to get one under our belt, and I love the Willamette Valley Pinots. They're just usually pretty pretty good easy drinkers so i'm hoping this one is the same so we'll see see how it goes i'm just absolutely awesome. shocked you picked another red wine after i knocked it out of the park last week with our layer cake i mean mm-hmm. i i would think you wouldn't even want to want even try anything to compete in that red wow. wine because you raised the bar so 
high with that one. It's yeah, so I mean, just high. pretty much any other red wine is probably going to be better than that. So, um, you know, I'm not worried. Can I do also speaking of <laughs> speaking of last week? Uh, can I do our first official headache report from the previous uh, podcast? Is that okay with you guys? Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah, headache confirmed after that one. Yeah. I did drink about half the bottle uh, reluctantly. I don't know why, but I did drink about half the bottle, and boy, yeah, I woke up with a pretty good headache the next day. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, the, the big concern was that the balance was off and the alcohol was too high. So, understandable. Uh, and it didn't have any flavor, but that shouldn't have anything to do with your headache. That's just, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, hoping, hoping for a, a better situation this week. Before we get into this week's wine, though, Let's throw it over to you, Colin. Teach us a little something about wine. This is the only thing you will learn. All right. So last week we talked a little bit bit about how to assess a wine. And I wanted to kind of pick up on one piece of that last week. We talked about the swirl, uh, the smell, the taste, and then your overall thoughts about the wine. And today I really wanted to focus in on the aromas and flavors in wine because I mentioned it briefly last week, but I think it's important to at least have an idea of what these are when you're drinking wine so you're, you're better well informed. So we, we talked first of all about primary aromas and primary aromas are the aromas and flavors of uh, the grape itself and then aromas and flavors you get from alcoholic fermentation. When you're drinking white wine, you're going to be looking for your green fruits, like apples and pears, uh, your citrus fruits, like grapefruit, lemon, and lime, some of your stone fruits sometimes, like peach and apricot. And then you can also absolutely find some of those floral notes, some of those what stone notes. And then when you're drinking your red wine, what you want to look for is the red fruits and the black fruits. And when we talk about red fruits and black fruits, what we're talking about is cranberries and the red fruits, raspberries, strawberries. And black fruits, we're talking about black currant, blackberry, uh, blueberry, and so on and so forth. So um, you're not going to find a lot of citrus in red wine. You're not going to find a lot of black fruit in white wine. And sometimes rosé can kind of split the difference where you see some red fruit, some tropical, depending upon the the grapes used to make the wine. Uh, those are your primary aromas. Uh, any questions about primary aromas before we jump into secondary aromas? No, so far so good, but let's add a layer of complexity here. All right, sounds good. So next, uh, we're going to talk about secondary aromas and flavors, and these are all the aromas and flavors that come from the winemaker themselves and how they've influenced the wine. A couple things they can do is, for example, aging a wine on oak. You can get some vanilla, some cloves, some nutmeg, some of those baking spices. Is aged on its leaves. You can get some of that biscuit and bready note. We talked about this when we were tasting the Mirwood Chardonnay in our first episode, I think. We, We talked a little bit about that bready note. And then this is also where you find your butter, your cheese, and your cream notes if a wine goes through malolactic fermentation, which I don't really want to talk about right now, but just know there's a separate process where the lactose, butter, cream, and cheese flavors come through. Any questions on those? Yeah, what's a lees? Lees is uh, dead yeast cells. So remember, we talked about that. I believe it was the first episode when we reviewed the Chardonnay. It had that kind of bready, yeasty flavor to it. We already yeah. learned this, Aaron. We learned it, Aaron. So we're going to go review, back to you, baby. Notes. It's been, it has been <laughs> nine weeks. Man, we got to we gotta do some pop quizzes along the way if you want me to remember words like leaves. Um, I might have not mentioned the actual word leaves. I might have just said dead yeast cells. Like, I remember um, everything you ever taught me, and wow. I don't remember the word leaves. We'll have to check the tape. We'll have to check it the is tape. There. We, we do have a tape. We have the tape. Let's, it's up there. Let's ask our producer to go ahead and insert that <laughs> clip right now, please, of the first time that we talked about it. Go ahead. Uh, being aged on its dead yeast cells. So that's where breadiness oh, comes from. Oh, you gave from. us a creepy fact. Great. Thank you. Okay, you've just come back from the proof of whether or not we said lees or dead yeast cells. By the way, such a nicer way to say dead yeast cells, right? Is, yeah, lees sounds nice. not appetizing at all. Yeah, Lee's. No, that's nice. No, for sure. I kind of wish you never taught oh. me that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, no, maybe you'll just forget it again like you did the first time. So. <laughs> oh, 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 cool. oh, I'm definitely going back to the tape now. Ooh, yikes. <laughs> yikes. All right, All right so those a little, are secondary. Uh, get a little too spicy for the pepper. Right. Here. Right. Anything else, Call? That was great. I feel like I learned a lot. Yeah. No, we have one, one last uh, tertiary aromas and flavors, which we haven't come across yet because 
These are all flavors and aromas you get from uh, wine aging, and most of the wines that we've had so far are relatively young. So we haven't come across any of these, but um, you get, no, I mean flavors like uh, almond and hazelnut, marmalades. Um, you can get some of that leather, some flourish floor. Again, we haven't really come across any of those, but uh, maybe we need to jump into some older wine to see if we can pick some of those flavors out. All right, so I want to make sure I understand this. So, so primary uh, flavors and aromas are from the grapes ingredients themselves. Secondary uh, are from what it's actually aged or or just ba- stored in the barrel. You know that aspect of it. And tertiary uh-huh. is the the uh, flavors or aromas that develop over time in the aging process. So that's the flavor that yep, would change it. more. You know, it, you know, five or ten or twenty years in. Yeah, absolutely. And you won't find those until you get, you know, probably significantly down the road. Maybe they start at five years, but you know, you get you get really far down the road, ten, fifteen, twenty. You're really going to start to experience some of those uh, tertiary flavors. The, the so, twenty twenty ones should... that we've been knocking out are not are not a a lot of <laughs> no. We have, we will not flavors. get any tertiary. Fl- no, uh-uh. uh, no twenty twenty one was a year though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I well, right, yeah. Like just two years ago, so you will <laughs> not get tertiary. And that's my spiel on aroma. Wonderful spiel. Thank you, Colin. Once again, I have learned a lot, and I'm going to take this knowledge and uh, see if I can apply it as we roll into our tasting. Uh, okay. <laughs> Tastes like wine. What was that drop? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I prepared a little special drop for you guys this evening. I sense that this is a screw top. I figured, you know, we had talked about during that episode that we needed a screw top drop, and I figured, what better way to celebrate with the screw top than a new drop? I think it was pretty spot on. That was I couldn't tell the That's difference. That's amazing. Can we hear that one more time, Gollum, please? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, for sure. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Tastes like wine. Uh, okay. I just, I love the, uh, brilliant. Okay. Like, he's never seen a screw cap yeah. before. Like, he's surprised he got it off. A screw cap is so much, like, more anticlimactic than, like, you know, opening up a bottle of wine. So it's like, we go. I open this one. Yeah. That no, you're right. is it hilarious. Is, but, uh, love it. <laughs> Great. Glad I could open it. All right, guys. Well, we've unscrewed our wine. Let's go ahead and uh, put it to the test. Let's give it a swirl. Give it a sniff. Yeah, I'm swirling as I was taught. Aaron, I swirl. see you. Great swirl. That's right. I'm sniffing as I was swirling taught. Sniff. And Beautiful. I, I learned things. Yeah, it was good. All right, Ooh. Aaron, what are you getting? It's a, this is a, a a lovely smelling wine. Not not super, you know, over the top. But you know, when you really stick your nose in there, you got some good stuff. I think I smell. Now maybe maybe some cherry. Is that is cherry? You guys smell cherry? Is that a thing? I'm with yeah. you. Yeah. No, that's good. Yeah, yeah I got cherry. Good call. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm right there. Joe, what do you think? I'm getting uh yeah, I'm getting two things that jump out at me right now. Uh earthy, definitely earthy. And by the way, I'm hundred percent with the cherry. Good call there. Uh but then earthy and then okay, can I say something that only a very select group of people are going to even understand it all, which is exactly the kind of thing you want to talk about on a podcast that you're trying to get more people to listen to. So let me really narrow it down one. Hey, the, hey, the more but specific, the better. That's what I hear. That's that's how this yeah, works. Yeah. But, you know, we mentioned before, Colin and I live in Orlando. So Colin, I know you'll you'll probably relate to this. I hope so. Aaron, I don't know, maybe when you were, when you were here, maybe you went on this ride. But there is a ride at Epcot called Spaceship Earth. It's the ball. If you've ever been on it, golf ball. There is the giant the, golf the big ball. old golf that's ball. Right. Smack dab at the, well, not really in the middle, in the front of the park. And there's this one scene that's kind of known for having like a really distinct and wonderful smell. It's the fall of Rome. If you've been on this ride, you may have noticed it and enjoyed the lovely smell. I get a little bit of that, like a little bit of smokiness. And it really <laughs> it, it's just so and I mean this in a great way, so reminiscent of kind of that that smell on uh on spaceship earth at epcot does that make sense <laughs> yeah no that what's really funny about that is like so i'm picking up on that you kind of woody i'm i'm getting like cedar out of it but like after you said that 
like if you just close your eyes you're right there you can see you can see the burning scenery you can smell that kind of artificial smoke and mm-hmm. in, in the wine it's actually it's pretty nice but you're absolutely mm-hmm. right and that's really funny because it really does transport you right there i feel like i'm gonna have like the reverse experience of youtube because i'm taking my kids to disney in a couple months and i'm gonna be on that ride and all of a sudden i'm gonna be like surrounded by the flames of rome and i'm gonna be like samuel robert this oh is my god it <laughs> smells like wall in here <laughs> yeah the people around me and everything i guess probably that's funny anyway. that's a really good call no that's awesome i love i love when you can associate uh interesting uh experiences to wine notes so that's really cool we talk a lot about associating wine notes to experiences mm-hmm. aaron is flipping the script he is and he's we'll see looking it. for experiences i am be standing outside that ride and I'll be like, like Pinot Noir, you're going to love this ride. <laughs> they just let people take that as they will. I don't know what that guy's talking about. But beyond that cedary note, which would be a secondary flavor or a secondary aroma coming from oak influence, I'm also getting into some raspberry, uh, cherry, like Aaron mm-hmm. said. Like Aaron. And then I get kind of like a, like Aaron said, yeah, I said that. Chill. <laughs> I, I credited <laughs> the note appropriately. Um, I'm also getting a little uh, baking spice with that. Some some nice warm, maybe mm-hmm. some nutmeg, some cinnamon, something along those lines. And then I get kind of like this uh, cola note, like almost like a cherry cola without the the bubbly, the fizzy. Uh, it's really nice. I, I enjoy it quite a bit. And then I'm not picking up on any tertiary, but again, this one's from 2021, so you wouldn't expect that out of this. Am I am I crazy with the the smell though? Not being like. It's like you really kind of have to work for it. Like it's not, I feel like we've opened some that it really hits you and this is like, I don't know. I feel like it's a little more nuanced. Uh, it's like, I've got it with you. It's like, I would call it medium on the expressive scale. It's not because you definitely, it has a smell. It, there, there is an aroma, but it's not like wafting out of it. You know, you really have to stick your nose in there. No, okay. I, don't, I don't know. I might disagree with you on that, but you know, it's just... Yeah, it's not here nor there. That doesn't really matter. I think I'm you, have a, you have a tier two level nose. I I am I have an uncertified. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. Uh, this is this is a certified <laughs> level two nose. So I pick up on things like that more than others. <laughs> should we taste it? Oh, awesome. We should. Yeah, taste let's it. let's see what you pick up on with that uh, level two certified tug of yours there. No. <laughs> That was really <laughs> weird. <laughs> I think palate would have been a better word than tongue, but all right. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and give this thing a, a, a taste here. Let's see what we think as well. All right, Aaron, I'm gonna throw it back to you. You know, I I am um, reluctantly going to admit that this wine might be slightly better than the uh, twelve dollar <laughs> layer understatement of the disaster year. I brought last week. Um, wow. no, it's the it's the it's a, yeah. Tasty wine. I'm going to go ahead and name all the structures of this that I'm good at and avoid all food items. It, you know, I really like the the tannin on this here. Like, the, it, it's it's like a little grippy, but not too much. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. The acidity is like in a really nice place. It has like a little bit of an aftertaste. But I think the most important thing, especially thinking of like the couple wines we really have not liked so far this season, it has a really good balance. Like, just I'm really thinking about the flavors here and, you know, the feel. And at no point am I thinking about like the alcohol aspect of this, uh, which is nice. Yeah, no, absolutely. C- couldn't agree more. What I love about it too is I think, like you said, super balanced. Like to me, you know, I'd, I'd say this is like a medium, medium kind of tannin situation. And then what I love about it too is it's it's fairly high, not like high, high, but medium high acid, which, you know, I, I just really enjoy here and to be just the whole thing works really nicely and then just drinking it here as well definitely getting you know the the raspberry situation still getting the the earthiness and then what's funny is earlier colin you said cherry cola and i was kind of like oh, like you know i'm smelling cherry for sure i didn't really know what you meant with the the cola part but then when i tasted it i was like oh yeah i kind of see kind of see exactly what you mean especially like that flat think about like a, a flat cherry cola or cherry dr pepper sort of a thing yeah and uh super super spot on and i mean that weirdly i mean that in, in a great way too no yeah very no, enjoyable I agree. I agree 
Um, yeah, I would I would agree with you guys on the structure, uh, high acid, medium tannin. I would actually I like the amount of tannin in this because a lot of times Pinot Noir is kind of a, a low tannin wine. So the fact that this has you know you can really feel the grip, I I appreciate. That's where I like my Pinot Noir. And then as far as flavor is concerned, definitely get that cherry cola, that raspberry, that cedar, those warm baking spices. It maps pretty pretty well from the nose to the palate. There are not too many surprises here, but it's it's tasty. And still manages to be a, a you know a light lighter body, a, a Pinot Noir sort of expected light body, great red wine in my opinion. Yeah, no, I I would agree. I think it's very well balanced, and they they hit a pretty nice note with the the structure, and then the the flavor kind of matches the structure too. Nothing really sticks out here at all. Works very harmoniously together. It's lovely. Colin, where do you, where do you put this in the dry right. spectrum? Dry, not it, not ex, is it extra dry? Dry. Yeah, but just I mean, for the purpose of enjoying wine, you really just need to know dry, and that's where this that's where this one sits. It is in fact dry. It is dry. Yes. Yeah. All right, guys. So let's do uh, official. Let's go ahead and see. Did we enjoy it? Yeah. But did they like it? It's time for the review. All right, folks. It's that time where we talk about where we're going to put this wine. Are we putting this in our wine fridge, our coveted wine fridge? Are we putting this on the kitchen table? Are we putting this in the closet to save for a rainy day? Or are we going to pour this thing right down the drain? I am going to start. I'm going to switch it up here. Colin, I'm going to go to you. Yeah, this is a pretty solid kitchen table wine for me. It's super tasty. It's well balanced, like you guys said, and it's it's an easy drinker. You know, it's not terribly complex or anything like that, but you definitely get some of those primary notes. You get some of those secondary notes, and it's super easy to drink. And it's just like tasty. I want to want to keep drinking more. So this one's definitely going on the kitchen table. Aaron, yeah, similarly, I am going to keep drinking more, and. I uh, <laughs> I agree. It's just it's like an all around good wine, and I'm always going to go back to the price point because I think that's an important part of, of what we're doing here. Man, you know we don't have a wine fridge wine yet, and I'm adding well delay for effect. Mm-hmm. You got me on the edge of my seat, absolutely. And so, what is he going to say? All of our wine fridges are empty. And there's, really? I think there's still gonna be after today. You know, it's, Ooh, oh, oh, I know. Man, no, you, uh, it's yeah. good. It's like good. And I am trying to be thoughtful about it because it, it, it is a, a tasty Pinot Noir. And I think the fact that there it is like $22 is, is a really excellent price point to be able to point to people and say, hey, you want to grab a good wine that you can put out for your friends and like really show off, especially, you know, one that you can serve, serve with a meal. You know, here's a really solid Pinot Noir uh, for 22 bucks. I think that's really valuable. It's not, it's, it's still missing, I think, something to put it in the wine fridge, but it is a very, very, very solid kitchen table wine and, and one that I would love to put, you know, put out during a dinner. Um, and one that I think my friend would be excited about going off and buying themselves between the quality of the experience of drinking it and knowing, you know, the price point as well. Yeah, uh, I, I totally agree. This is kind of like, the experience, in my opinion, that you hope to have when you're standing at the wine shop and you're about to buy a bottle that you're not familiar with. And you hope that it's going to be something that you really enjoy, something that makes you think a little bit and something you would want to drink again and share with your friends. And and that's totally what I experienced with this wine. It's uh, this is this is proudly going on my kitchen table wine. But not only that, I would say, too, that uh, this is one that I would bring to my friend's kitchen table. Like I would feel good about bringing this and, and sharing with my friends, it's a uh, very, very, very strong wine and thoroughly enjoyed. So uh, I guess that kind of brings us to the last question. Uh, the writing's kind of on the wall here, guys. Is this a waste of our wine? No, absolutely not. It is not. Good good wine, good price. Yeah. It's a drinker. Yeah, Agreed. absolutely. And not that we're keeping score, but Agreed. Colin won Aaron Zero. Wow. Oh. <laughs> we'll, see how, we'll see how Joel does. That that's an interesting thing. Maybe we will start keeping Maybe score. Maybe yeah, I'm not opposed to it. I'm into it. I have yeah. some ideas for next week, by the way. But this is this definitely I felt good after the layer cake. This raised the bar. Well, I felt so bad physically after the layer cake. <laughs> <laughs> and then drinking this one, this really raised the bar on the quality and the the standard here. So I gotta think a little bit about what I'm gonna bring to the table next week. But 
this was really great. Thank you so much. Thank you for uh, listening along with us. Hope you all enjoyed this. Let us know what you think, by the way. Aaron, share with us a little bit about how uh, folks out there can follow us and interact with us. Yeah. Hey, uh, so I have really been embracing my inner influencer. I, I really thought I missed that uh, generational part of my life, but no, this has given me a second life. So thank you all. I have been posting some some mad cute advertisements for our podcast on, on the Instagram. And uh, I've been really proud of them. I've been like haunting TikTok, trying to find like the trendy songs. When you see those, please like, like, click on the link. The link will take you to whatever uh, different podcast website you want to use. You can visit our website. Please like, subscribe, follow, leave nice reviews when you can. Um, and just interact with us a as much as possible. We would just love to, you know, keep building out our listenership and of course if you really like listening to us go ahead and share it out with your friends and family why keep it all to yourself share share with others share the love share the love all right that'll do it for our review of the samuel robert winery family reserve pinot noir from willamette valley oregon willamette. uh willamette. thanks a lot for listening willamette 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 <laughs> thanks a lot for listening and uh, as always guys stop wasting your wine See you next time. Hi, y'all. Bye. Bye.